we're going to be converting a reciprocating compressor over to a scroll let's take a look right here is the unit that we're going to be working on here's the compressor sometimes this compressor wants to start sometimes it doesn't every technician should have themselves a pair of analog gauges these are great for recovering for pressure testing for a lot of things that you don't want to bust out the probes for and there you go baby we got the compressor vacuum pump evacuation kit nitrogen we just picked this up today i've been wanting one it's really nice it's a ratcheting copper cutter and then i also purchased this little bitty one it's called the junior copper cutter by husky i've been wanting something smaller and this little copper cutter so small it can fit perfectly in these little tight areas and this is exactly what i wanted i needed something small enough to get into air handlers where i can cut capillaries if i have to and not have to worry so much about the space we got that cut up now let's go ahead and uh, pull our compressor out and if you're in this industry and you don't have a compressor puller you better go get one because this is how you're going to keep yourself from injuring your back and shit get to drink go yeah okay, so here's the two compressors here's our reciprocating compressor here's our scroll compressor the reciprocating compressor is the one that uses pistons almost like a car engine and then this uses a um it's called a scroll mechanism and it it has one stationary piece and then it has another piece that looks like a little like a spiral in the middle and as it's spinning it's compressing the gas and it's only doing that in one motion so that's why scroll compressors are a lot more efficient um, than reciprocating compressors so. all right guys so since i have everything cut out and the compressor and all the lines are open what i'm gonna do right now because it's really wet really raining it's humid outside i don't want any moisture inside the system i'm gonna go ahead and start flowing nitrogen at a very low psi um, like i was brazing but since it's going to be going for a long time while i'm fitting the pipes and everything up until the point of brazing um, it's going to help remove a lot of excess moisture um, out of the system Alrighty, so I have it set to braise. Inside here we have an entire kit to help us retrofit this compressor. It comes with the feet, the harness, everything that we would need in order to get this job done. So I just need to get me a piece of copper here to here. And then I'll cut I'll cut this here and I'll get me a piece of copper that just goes from around here this way. And then we should be good to go compressor harness is going to be on the back side but that's okay it's all about making the job easier guys if all the pipes and everything are good and everything's working fine it doesn't really matter how it's configured this is a retrofit kit so they gave me this piece of copper here so what i'm what i did was i bent it this way so i'm going to come here like this i'm going to make a cut and then i'm going to splice it in right here and for that i just got to open this up a little bit and the good thing is this copper is very malleable still because it's new hasn't been used hasn't been stressed and once i make that cut guys look at this we could just bend this out a tiny bit right here we got that there we got that there bada bing bada boom Just remember guys, we're still flowing nitrogen. We are still flowing nitro. And for a lot of you new techs out there, that right there is not a filter dryer, that is a muffler.
our filter dryer used to be here. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna actually put a bypass here and then I'm gonna relocate our filter dryer to outside our condenser for servicing purposes. If Did we get it all the way around? We did. Did we get it all the way around here? We did. Now that we got everything brazed in, We can go ahead and proceed to pressure test our system. I got the pressure set to about 275 and it is not moving whatsoever. Please let there be no leaks, please. Now let's check on these. All right, everyone, we got the evacuation set all hooked up. Let's go ahead and turn everything on. Let's open up this gas ballast. Just by looking at it, that looks like it came right out the factory, baby. This is why I say to get an evacuation set, even if you don't get in a super expensive one. This one that I have, I've been using it, so I use it all the time. It's the Max Evac kit, it's about 200 bucks, comes with two high flow hoses, two core removers. All you need is a vacuum, I mean, a micron gauge. I mean, look at this, guys, we're already down to 464 microns. and. I've only been running this vacuum for, I don't know, a little less than 10 minutes. And what I went ahead and did was instead of running all the wires back through here, because that was going to be hard to get to without having to remove all, all of this, what I did was I went ahead and just ran it under the condenser coil. There was a small little spot and it's coming up through here and it's actually coming in through here. Like I said, this is a complete retrofit. So if you're doing this kit, do it the way that it makes it easier for you. You don't have to stick to the same exact way that they did things. Cause sometimes the engineers like to overdevelop stuff and make it really freaking hard for us service technicians to do our job. All right, we have our system fully wired. Compressor harness, everything goes that way. Comes up through here, comes up through here. I have everything wired up right here. I have spade terminal connectors for our compressor and our hermetic side of our capacitor. We did replace the dual cap and I verified all the wiring is correct. So now we're at 173 micron vacuum. Now it's time for me to do a decay test. And for this being a retrofit, I am very, very pleased with the way it came out. Everything looks factory looks good no issues i've been running our vacuum or running our decay test for 10 minutes and we're at 402 microns so all right guys so as you can see this unit calls for eight pounds of refrigerant all right baby let's go ahead and turn our system on 
moment of truth. Is this compressor going to start? Contactors engaged. Cross our fingers. right there we put in almost eight and a half pounds of refrigerants after looking at our charging information right here our line set is about 40 feet so i went ahead and added an additional pound of refrigerant to our system yeah my compressor is good sitting in there look at that look at that beautiful piping look at it admire it take notes copy it i don't care Right here we have the indoor unit. It's another train. And I've already verified airflow and everything on this system, so. Right here you can see we have a 22, diff 22 degree differential in cooling. And our refrigerant pressures look great. All right, so the system just kicked on in heating. And everything is looking really freaking good, guys. The longer I run it, the better it looks. Everything is looking great, guys. It's already up to 80 degrees inside the house. We got the compressor replaced. And like I said, look at that pipe. It looks good. We bypassed our dryer here. We relocated out there. We redid all the wiring, replaced the capacitor. You already know what it is, baby. Let's go.